What you just watched is in fact real. Not faked, not spliced, nothing. And it's running on real hardware. You just saw Super Mario Land running on Pokemon Stadium's Game Boy Tower. Normally not possible, however, for the last few months, a friend and I have been actively working on trying to get this to work. And today, we have finally finished and we are able to actually show it off. And so this video is going to be me talking about the process in which we went through to get this to work, how it works, how Pokemon Stadium's Game Boy Tower works, and how we finally exploited the Game Boy Tower. So where did the idea come from? Well, a few years ago, well, actually five years ago, a YouTuber by the name of Mesmerize uploaded a video showing them launching Super Mario Land using Pokemon Stadium and the GB Tower. Now, in the description, they briefly sort of kinda explain how they did it, and I'll get back to that later in the video when we get to how it's done. But the video simply shows them booting Super Mario Land in Pokemon Stadium, and that's about it. And they don't really leave too much information on what really is going on and how it was done. And I found this video back in like December of last year, maybe November. And then around roughly the same time, a YouTuber by the name of Stop Skeletons from Fighting uploaded a video talking about the N64 transfer pack. And in that video, they talked about Mesmerize video. And I actually suggest watching both Mesmerize video and the video from Stop Skeletons from Fighting. Uh, their video is especially pretty good. But that interests me in looking into this. And so I began starting to mess around with Pokemon Stadium myself. Though in Mesmerize video, he uses the North American version of Pokemon Stadium 1. And at the time, all I had was the Japanese Pocket Monster Stadium. So it was a different game, and I was unsure if the process would work the same way. So now that we've talked about where the idea came from, let's talk a bit about how the GB Tower actually works. So, its intended use is through using the transfer pack with a Game Boy copy of a Pokemon game to allow you to play said Pokemon game on your TV. Now, how does it actually work, and what is the transfer pack actually doing? Well, for a while it was theorized that Pokemon Stadium simply has the ROM files of the Game Boy games themselves, and the transfer pack is simply just sending the save data over. But, thanks to some data miners, we were able to confirm that there actually are no ROMs on Pokemon Stadium, and in fact the entirety of the game's cartridge, including the ROM and the save, are being read and transferred through the transfer pack. Now, how exactly does it know what it is it's playing is actually pretty interesting. Game Boy games have what's called headers. Think of it as the game's ID, and Pokemon Stadium has a database of the Pokemon game's headers, and it uses this to authenticate one of the Game Boy games when it's plugged into the transfer pack. If the header matches, then it knows it's a Pokemon game. If it doesn't match, it'll just tell you the game can't be used. And this is actually where this exploit comes into play. So I mentioned how Mesmerize kinda explained how they went about doing this, and they simply said that they managed to do this by heavily modifying the game's header and padding out the ROM. So that doesn't really provide a whole lot of information as to what needs to be done to the game's header, or even so much when it came to the ROM editing. But thankfully, there's the GB Dev Wiki that actually has documentation on the Game Boy headers. And doing this, we can check and see just exactly what the header is doing and what it has for the Pokemon games. Using the GB Dev Wiki and its documentation on the header, I was able to figure out what exactly I needed to edit in order for the header to match that of a normal Pokemon game. Armed with this knowledge, I used a hex editor to modify the header of a completely different Game Boy game in order to match the header of a Pokemon Blue cartridge. And through quite a bit of messing around, and trial and error, and constantly writing new ROMs, I was able to finally get Pokemon Stadium to recognize a cartridge that wasn't Pokemon as Pokemon. Now really quick, I do want to talk about how I went about writing the ROMs and what I used. I, For the cartridge, I actually went and bought some random reproduction cartridge of Pokemon Crystal off of eBay. I went and did this because I wanted a cartridge that was a single ROM cart with a rewritable board. 
I could have easily just gotten a flash cart and be able to have access to multiple ROMs. However, I'm pretty sure the way that those cartridges are programmed would be completely different from any other normal Game Boy game, and so the header wouldn't be able to be converted as easily and might actually break the flash cart doing so. So I opted for a reproduction cart that is just a single ROM to a cartridge. And then to be able to rewrite the cartridge, I bought a little tool called the GBX cart RW. This is a fancy little tool that allows you to plug in your Game Boy carts and even Game Boy Advance carts and either back up the games to your computer or if the cartridge is reprogrammable, you can write new ROMs to it. And using these two things, along with the transfer pack and Pokemon Stadium, obviously, I spent quite a bit of time with trial and error of getting the cartridges to run. And I kept running into one big problem. The games would see it as a Pokemon game, but would not run it as a Pokemon game. Now it's worth mentioning going into this, all I had to test these on was the Japanese Pocket Monster Stadium, and then a Japanese version of Pokemon Stadium 2. I didn't have a copy of Pokemon Stadium like what Mesmerize was using. And fast forward until just recently with the Portland Retro Gaming Expo 2019, where I was able to find a relatively cheap copy of Pokemon Stadium 1. And this is when our work continued. Angerville and I got together once again, and Angerville worked towards some of the code he had had to automate this sort of process with modifying the header. And when we started to mess with it again, we were actually able to finally do it. We were able to get Super Mario Land to work on a original copy of Pokemon Stadium 1. The one big addition we had going into it this time, as opposed to the previous times, is we went back to what Mesmerize said five years ago, where he said that he heavily modified the header and padded out the ROM. What we decided to do was pad out the ROM to be the exact same file size as that of a Pokemon cartridge, thinking that maybe Pokemon Stadium has some form of check to see the memory size as well. So along with the normal header modification, we began to pad out the ROM with just empty data to make it the same file size of that of a Pokemon cartridge. And voila! After many months of messing around with this, we were finally able to get Super Mario Land to boot from Pokemon Stadium's GB Tower. And now, there will finally be a documented way to do this. And the tools that Angerville made to automate this process will become available shortly after I'm done porting his code. So you can look forward to that if you're interested in investing with this yourself. So what are the limitations of this? Well, believe it or not, there actually are some downsides to doing this. First off, it can only run Game Boy games. It doesn't run anything on Game Boy Color. At least from what I've tested, nothing actually works. It recognizes it, but none of it will actually load in the GB Tower. It just ends up with an error. So Game Boy Color games don't work, only Game Boy games. And the biggest downside is that it can't save. Which for a good chunk of the Game Boy's library, that doesn't really matter. But games like Zelda or Mario Land 2, you're not going to be able to save. Anything that actually requires a battery backup or actually saving to the cartridge isn't going to work. And that's because when we modified the header, it actually changes how the game saves, as how the game saves its data is actually tied to the header, and the header keeps track of that information. So we basically modified how the game thinks it should save, as opposed to how the game actually saves. That, coupled with how Pokemon Stadium thinks the game should be saved, it basically results in the game actually just straight up not saving, and it will actually cause Pokemon Stadium to get confused about how to save, and after a while of playing, you'll get prompted to reset the cartridge in the transfer pack by plugging it back in. So, you can't save. It's possible to play the games that can't save, but you'll just be pestered about not being able to save and having to unplug and plug back in the cartridge every so often. And so that's pretty much it. After 20 years, Pokemon Stadium's GB Tower has finally been exploited to run other Game Boy games. And all you really need to do it is a rewritable cartridge, which, you know, reproduction cartridges are somewhat pretty common on eBay. It didn't take me very long to find a really cheap one and a way to be able to rewrite the cartridges. I'll leave a link to the tool that I use, the GBX Cart RW, down in the description if you're interested in picking one up yourself. 
other than that, that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. First off, I want to thank Angerville for working on the code to automate the process and spending the last few months working with me on this. I want to thank Mesmerize for his original video showing this off. Uh, a sort of thanks to Stop Skeletons from Fighting for getting me to actually be interested in pursuing this idea. And so yeah, that's pretty much it. All the links of the things that I talk about in this video will be available in the description and the tool used to automate this process will become available shortly. So if you're interested in doing this yourself, you can just come back and check the description later or check my Twitter account where I will tweet out the tool when it's made available. So I want to thank everyone for watching and I will see you all next time.